Uh, right now, let's uh, talk actually about another very, very sensible fellow, James Esses. He's a social commentator and co-founder of Thoughtful Therapists and joins us now. Good morning to you, James. Morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. You, of course, are joining us to talk about, well, you know, latest stories involving, I think, almost every single day, you know, trans activists, trans ideologists and like. And, um, of course, crucially, front page pay, pay of all papers today, we had uh, you know, hundreds of protesters uh, gathering outside the Oxford Union Society at Oxford University yesterday, protesting against a talk by uh, the feminist philosopher Kathleen Stock. She's been accused of being transphobic, a hate speaker and all the like, simply because she's stood up for well women being women men being men and um, and 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 well you know, biological reality um what did you make of the protests um, i mean i thought it was terribly depressing you know if, if you were visiting here from some foreign land and didn't know the context and you saw the level of vitriol being thrown as so you saw the level of security protection that she required you might think that she was on trial for war crimes or something of yeah. that nature instead as you just said simply stating that men are men and women are women i also find it very depressing you know it's one thing for university senior management to try and stifle free speech but it's another thing altogether for students themselves to willingly stifle free speech i mean the entire oh, i don't know i think it's worse the other way around i think the fact that the university bodies have not stood up against this i find their academics as well i find that more scary i kind of expect i kind of expect 19 year olds to act like idiots <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's undoubtedly scary when the powers that be try and clamp down on free speech, and that's why I'm happy to see that this legislation being pushed through by the government. But there is something undeniably depressing about students who should be seeking to broaden their horizons, be curious, challenge their thinking on the world to actually decide, you know what, we don't need to hear this full stop. And I mean, you know, Oxford is meant to be a bastion of academia and intellect. And, and the best they had was some individual gluing their hands yeah. to the floor. I mean, it was utterly pathetic. Well, well, let's hear actually from that uh, protester, Riz Posnet. Uh, she, she would say her pronouns are they, hmm. but I, I, I prefer to use biological reality. I'm not in any way intending any offence. I just, uh, I, I just stuck to stick to reality. Riz person that spoke outside the Oxford Union following being released by police. She interrupted Kathleen Stock's talk, glued herself to the floor. Uh, she was wearing a T-shirt uh, saying no more dead trans kids. Um, not sure that was helpful. Uh, she called the talk dangerous. Here's what she had to say outside the Oxford Union later. Can we get to that clip or not? Yeah. Got it now, I think. It's not about me where I'm just one of you all trying to protest uh, this speech. She has a right to free speech as much as we has, have a right with our Article 10 and 11 rights to protest. And I exercise those rights. I'm sure you all agree with me that her speech is dangerous, is hateful, and it hurts trans people, particularly trans youth. Yeah. I don't know what the word was that was beeped out, James, but it's not about me. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the people who protest, isn't it? Look at me, look at me. I thought some wonderful pictures, actually, of uh, of Riz sort of glued there, sitting there, looking very pleased, uh, you know, to have her T-shirt on. And there was Kathleen Stock just sitting there sort of mildly amused. Um, the key thing is the speech, the, well, not the speech, but the talk, the Q&A, was able to take place. But again, it's the, when people say things like dangerous and hateful, what I would really like is people like Kathleen Stock and people like J.K. Rowling, who get extraordinary abuse on line um, for them to start suing i'd like to be so you know we start actually having libel actions against people you know saying yeah. lies about people who are saying things that are not remotely controversial to the vast majority of us oh i, I completely agree i mean we're being told that these individuals are bringing down a, a genocide on trans people i mean it's atrocious but you know from a, from a mental health perspective I, I am concerned that we are encouraging mental ill health. I mean, I read this story about these welfare spaces that had to be set up that featured things like earplugs for students who were so distressed at the thought of Kathleen Stock even being within a five mile radius. Of them. I mean, this is this is deeply worrying. I mean, as I said earlier, students should be there to broaden their intellectual horizons. But I mean, to be encouraging young people in society to become this, uh, I don't know, this stressed out, this overwhelmed simply because there's somebody that they disagree with on their campus. I mean, it's it's really quite worrying. And I, I don't know what their professors and um, 
lecturers think of this type of conduct but certainly if i was running university they'd be out the they'd be out the door altogether i mean it's it's oh, well that's the thing and now that's not cancel culture my view is if you are if you are not willing to allow debate if you i mean there's a difference between someone standing outside of the placard mm. I've, I've got no problem with that i can think you're an idiot because you're saying someone shouldn't be allowed to speak but if you are actually doing anything to actually stop someone being able to speak i think that should be you know that's against the rules of the university they are required to allow free speech uh, i think you should be told you're out the door. That, that's just not acceptable. Students need to be told, you can speak, but you can't stop other people speaking. And also, if you're so convinced that you're right, why don't you debate these supposedly dangerous, hateful ideas? Because when we debated people like Nick Griffin of the BNP, it's amazing how often their ideas are defeated by sensible ideas. But I want to talk to you all, say, about um, these dangerous ideas. I mean, how much... The, the really dangerous ideas about you know this sort of this trans sort of cult ideology how much they have imposed themselves on you know the nhs the the trans group mermaids um um being being able to effectively draft nhs guidelines for treating children who are questioning their gender you have as someone you know you're a therapist yourself you 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 worked as a, a, a for, with, with childline uh helping to uh, talk to children uh, who included those who were concern you know worried about their bodies and, and questioning mm. their gender um and and you've exposed how quickly so many people now working in childline will be to talk about you know chest binding and talk about you know other other ways of sort of effectively encouraging children down this questioning of their gender route um this ideology it's in our schools it's in our it's in our you know our, our mental health guidance it's in our nhs this is this is getting really scary it is and and, and people and particularly parents don't know who they can trust anymore i mean you know childline was founded with, with the aim of safeguarding children from harm and now we discover they may well be contributing to harming children i mean you know I've, as you said i I volunteered as a counsellor there for five years. I raised concerns about gender ideology taking hold within the organisation. I was soon after given the boot. You know, you've got these message boards online, unmoderated, where children, well, we assume they're children because adults could easily create profiles, you know, giving advice to children to take cross-sex hormones behind their parents' backs, telling each other there, there is a genocide against them. And Childline are happy to sit back and allow this to take place. I mean, there's a, there's a trans pride flag hanging in the window of their central London counselling room. I mean, what, what sort of message does yeah. that send to the counsellors and the children who reach out to them? It tells them, as far as I'm concerned, that this is all about ideology and nothing to do with safeguarding. And but I mean, you know, where, where, where do people turn to? And as you say, yes, schools are signposting young people towards organisations like Mermaids, which are being investigated by the Charity Commission for safeguarding concerns. I mean living in very scary times julia uh, that's the thing it really is and a lot of people say oh for good to say you know we've got these cases i don't know isla bryson the trans rapist and these are sort of weird cases one off they're not and, and we have now got thousands upon thousands of young confused unhappy some with mental health illness uh, Ill, 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 issues uh, other issues young teenagers and younger children as well who are turning to adults for help and Instead of, say, you know, if they had anorexia, us trying to help them through and talk them through and get them to sort of, you know, understand and, and to, to help save them from their, their mental health problems, we are basically having a system which is almost encouraging them. Well, I mean, this is it. And again, it's it's ideology over proper clinical practice. I saw Susie Green, the former CEO of Mermaids, come out and say that, you know, doctors who weren't prescribing puberty blockers for some of her clients were transphobic. I mean, she yeah. doesn't even give thought to the fact that maybe they thought that this wasn't in their best interests, given the potential irreversible harm and damage they might cause. Yeah. Um, so that seems to have gone completely out the window altogether yeah. um, and again we had this debate with the tavistock and things and people thought oh okay it's all been solved it's not it's still a massive problem and and it needs to be rooted out james you've been a fantastic whistleblower on a lot of this and i so appreciate it. and you get a lot of abuse as well and i've lost work as a result of this but you're a co-founder of thoughtful therapists social commentator i so appreciate you joining us